I want to talk to you about the new Laravel starter kits. They're pretty awesome and they come in the React, View and Livewire flavor. Let's check them out. Starter kits for Laravel have existed for a while, but up to recently, and actually by the time of recording this video still, here's what the experience of starting a new project would look like. Right off the bat, if we wanted to use a starter kit, we'd have to make the choice between Laravel Breeze and Jetstream. Both of these gives you user accounts, registration, password resets, user profiles, and so on. And then Jetstream takes it up a notch with two-factor authentication and team accounts. So both these options are great options, but they introduce this subtle early decision that you have to make, perhaps at a time where you're not quite sure where your project is going. I know that myself, the first time I tried Laravel, I sort of got stuck in this little decision panic between the two. Okay, so here we're going to choose Laravel Breeze. And you can see that next we have multiple options. We have Blade with Alpine, Livewire in two different flavors, React with Inertia, Vue, API only. Here I'm going to choose React with Inertia and I'm going to show you the current experience you would have had with starter kits up to today. We'll just keep all the options to their default. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. I'll start the dev server with npm run dev. And as I'm using herd, you can see I can visit starterkits.test. And there's our starter kit as you probably know it. So I can register. And there I'm logged in my dashboard and I have my profile and all the good stuff. And what you see here is basically what you got. One single app design and then from there up to you to customize it. Now, don't get me wrong. These starter kits were already amazing and incredibly useful. But I think the new starter kits take it to the next level. All right, I've hyped them up. It's now time to check out this new starter kit. So remember, at the time of recording this, I cannot run the new Laravel new command because it's not out yet. So I'm going to close my eyes and jump into the future and pretend that I can see them. Wait, wait, what? It's actually working. React, view, live wire. No more Breeze or Jetstream choice. There is one unified choice for each stack. As you know by now, I like React, so I am going to choose the React starter kit and let's pretend that I'm installing the starter kit that way, but really, I'm installing it from GitHub. And by the way, while I'm silly here, you don't have to use the Laravel new command. You can install the starter kits from their respective GitHub repo where you will find all the information in the readme. All right, we're back to the future and I have my brand new React starter kit. So far, the splash page is looking a whole lot like the old one, but don't let this fool you. This new starter kit packs a lot of new stuff under the hood. So let's go and register. Aha, now things start to look a little different. This new React starter kit is built with TypeScript, Shadcn UI, Tailwind CSS version 4, and Inertia version 2. This front-end stack unlocks a lot of power and an exceptional developer experience, so I'll try my best to show you a mix of the UI improvements and the DX improvement as well. So I'm super excited to show you the possibilities you have in terms of different layouts, but what I'll do is first create an account, show you the dashboard, and then we'll go back to customizing things. All right, so I'll register myself and I will create my account. And woo, I am greeted with this really nice and modern dashboard. You can see placeholder panels that gives you an idea of how you could arrange your page. We have this navigation menu where I can go to the settings, reset my password, and even choose between light and dark mode or the system mode. I am definitely in the light mode camp over here. Let me show you some of the inertia to goodness. So I'll open the network tab and I want you to look at what happens here when I hover over the password and appearance navigation links. You can see that we have prefetched those pages with a get request right as we hovered on the link with the anticipation of probably clicking on that link. And so we have a super fast experience. If I go in the settings layout, where I have the various navigation links, you can see that we're using prefetch, which is responsible for the behavior you just seen. So pretty cool user experience stuff. All right, let me go back to the dashboard and I wanna show you some of this flexibility you have in terms of UI layout. So right now we are on the dashboard page and you can see here that the dashboard page is using the app layout. So if I go to definition here, you can see it's using the app layout template coming from here, imported from layout app, app sidebar layout. So if I go in layout app, look at this, we have the sidebar layout, which is what you currently see here with the sidebar on the left. And looks like we also have a header layout. So let's try to change this to header. And check this out. Now we have the navigation bar at the top. We have the drop down menu, which used to be on the bottom left up here. 
and everything still looks great, but with a different look and feel to it. Since we're talking about the app header, let's take a look at this app header. There's a lot going on here, but you can see the navigation items. So just for fun, let's duplicate that one and call it, hmm, let's go with stats. Uh, we'll go to the homepage. And for the icon, I didn't even mention this, but the starter kit uses Lucid icons, which means you have access to a ridiculous amount of great looking icons. You can literally guess what's good for stats, maybe chart. And there you go, chart, chart bar. Let's go with chart bar. And just like that, we've added a new navigation item pretty effortlessly. So I will change the layout back to the sidebar one. So we're back to this layout and I'll show you some more customizations that you can do. Let's go in the app sidebar component. That's kind of the equivalent of what we've just looked at for the navigation header. So you have nav items where you can have more stuff. This time let's go with is plus a thing, <laughs> it sure is. So here we added a new menu item and I won't show you, but you can do the same for the bottom here with the footer nav items. But what I want to show you here is it's using this sidebar component. And I know that some of you watching this might not like the idea of seeing or writing TypeScript, but I'm sure that all of you will enjoy the experience of consuming components that are built with TypeScript. So here's what I mean by that. Discovering this sidebar component for the first time, knowing nothing about it, if I hover over it, I instantly see there are a side option that can go left and right, a variant and collapsible options. And you can see it's already using some of these. If I delete this, I will be presented with the other possible option, floating and inset. So let's try floating. And did you notice the sidebar is now in its own floating panel. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see this panel that wraps the whole sidebar from top to bottom, which I think looks really nice. Let's try the other option. We had inset. And this time the sidebar looks like it's behind the main panel, which is itself wrapped in a panel. All right, I will log out of my account for a second and go back to the register page. And as you may have guessed, the auth pages, the auth layout also have multiple UI variations. So if I go in the register page, we'll see here that we're using this time the auth layout and it seems very familiar, the template using a specific layout. And if I open the sidebar and I go in layout auth this time, you can see we have three different layouts. So the simple we've just looked at, Let's try the card layout. Okay, very nice. We have now this card layout with a slight light gray background. And let's try the split layout. Hey, this is really nice. So you get a lot of flexibility out of the box, but what is super cool is everything is available for you to customize. And because of the text stack choices, it's actually super easy to customize. Let's say we wanted to change the split panel and maybe do one third here and two thirds with the form. I'd search for the split layout. There it is. And so we probably have a grid. Yep, here, grids with two columns at the large breakpoint. Let's make it three columns at the large breakpoint. And so the first child here is the side panel. And the second panel here at the large breakpoint, we want to go call span two to make it span across two of the three columns. And just like that, we've done a pretty significant change to our layout in what, five seconds. Beyond just layout stuff, everything is broken down in neat UI components powered by Shadsy and UI. So we have form field components, a button component. And speaking of the button, let's search for button. And if I open the sidebar, you will see we have all these UI components. These are generated by Shadsy and UI and you can completely customize them. The button component is a good example of how things are structured within these components. So you can see we have multiple visual variants uh, like default, destructive, and then different sizes. Once again, with the power of TypeScript where the button variants are passed as variant props. If I go back to the register page and I look for the button that must be here somewhere here, I can pretty confidently expect that there will be a variant prop and I don't have to remember the values. It will suggest them to me. So let's try destructive, which is probably a big red aggressive look. And yep, or we could make the button secondary and change the size to small. And I've objectively made things look worse here, but you get the idea of how powerful and flexible it is and how easy you can customize anything you want. Not only can you change the existing variants of a component, but you can also dive in the variants and completely customize with Tailwind classes the look and feel for each. All right, I think you get the idea and you see how powerful this stack is. If you're already familiar with this stack, you're probably super excited. And if you're not, I think you're gonna like it.
I think I said I like React a few times, but let's not forget about the view and Livewire versions of the new starter kits. So if the React starter kit is built with and UI, which is a React library, what could the view version be built with? Well, ShadCN as well. There's a very popular ShadCN view package out there, which is a port of ShadCN for view, and it has the same components, the same documentation and everything you like about ShadCN. So I could show you the new Laravel view starter kit, but honestly, it looks exactly like the React one and has the same feature set. The only difference is it's built with view and chat CN view, but everything else looks the same, behave the same. So if view is your jam, you're definitely going to love this one. Go check it out. But I think that now we should talk about the live wire starter kit. So React, chat CN, view, chat CN, view. Let me guess, chat CN live wire? No, this time things are a little bit different. Okay, I've pulled up the Livewire starter kit here and we're gonna go through the motions of creating an account. And as you can see, things look mostly similar, but a little different. So I'll sign up. So again, similar look and feel and set of options. So I can go in my profile and reset my password, change to dark mode or light mode. So we're pretty much getting the same feature set, but let's take a look at the code. All right, this is a Livewire app now, not an Inertia one, so we don't have pages in the JS folder, but we are using views. And what do I see here? A Flux directory? Wait, wait, hold up. Flux is a paid library, so does it mean I have to pay to use the Livewire starter kit? Nah, of course not. Shout out to Caleb Porzio, who has agreed to make a subset of the Flux component, the base component, completely free for everyone, and that's what is used in these starter kits. Essentially, Flux Pro, which is the paid product, will tackle much more ambitious problems like charts to the delight of Ian. Are you gonna build a scatter plot? But the set of UI components used in these starter templates, so buttons, form fields, model, etc., they're all free now. So if I look at the register page, here's our markup, and you can see it's using the flux input component, the flux button, etc. And while the intention wasn't to create an exact pixel perfect replica of the React and Vue starter kits, you basically get the same experience and the same feature set with the Livewire starter kits. So if you're Livewire and Flux enthusiast, I think you're going to be pretty excited about this. Okay, I think that's it for this tour of the new Laravel starter kits. Like I said, you can install them with Laravel new in your terminal, or you can go to the GitHub repository for each of the three starter kits and you'll find all the information that you need in the readme. The Laravel team has worked really hard on these new starters and I'm pretty sure they're excited to see what you're going to build with it. Have fun, see you later.